Last Tuesday, I just seen the new Halloween sequel to the 1978 Halloween. Um, so this is my thoughts and opinions on the film. So right off the bat, I'm just gonna say I'm not one for milking a franchise, whether it be Saw, A Nightmare on Street, Friday the 13th, Child's Play. But sometimes, if they can improve the story and the characters, go for it, you know. Or even bring something new to the table, perhaps. But without killing the original story, I made it so right. And if you can't do that, why bother? That being said, I had held my expectations to this film to a minimum. And that way, I wouldn't be as upset if I, if I thought it sucked ass. Now, what I'm going to say is that I was actually into the film. I liked it. I did appreciate the efforts they put into it with the Lloyd Strode, Michael dynamic with, you know, Lloyd Strode struggling with uh, PTSD and her trauma, which she, we see that in H2O, but they deal with it more in this film, which is nice, uh, considering this is generally Curtis's best performances in a Halloween film, and arguably of her career. I've not seen a lot of her films, but you can really feel the character's tension and terror and her life struggles, really, if you believe every word she says. Now, with the dialogue, with Lori telling about you know, her failed relationships and everything with her husband or boyfriend or whatever, I would have liked to have seen more of that, maybe. Um, or even with, um, get down, with, um, Jerry Greer's character, Karen, uh, Laura's daughter, I would like to have seen her possibly not be single, I mean, that would have been nice too, but also maybe to have ha seen her have come to a final end of her relationship with her husband, basically, of battling with her issues with her mother and pushing her husband her, her, her husband Ray away <clears throat> and through that I thought it would have been interesting to see Ray you know understand where Lloyd's coming from you know with her being persuaded by Karen and Ray understanding that because she does the same thing for Ray but that's caused by you know Karen's upbringing by Lori um, and I thought that would have been interesting to see. As far as Michael Myers goes in this film, they really, uh, you know, got back to that classic Myers feel with, you know, um, he felt a sense of urgency and danger around him. It wasn't just a guy in a mask, you know. Um, and they really set this up with the beginning of the film when, you know, they, the doctors mentioned, don't, do not uh, pass the yellow line, and that was really intense, and it set up, you know, how dangerous this guy is, and old Michael Myers, <coughs> um, but then also, it reminded me of, like, I know this wasn't a reference to the movie, because it has nothing to do with it, but it just reminded me of it, because it was similar, kind of, um, and Times the Lambs, it reminded me of this scene, when he said don't pass the line, it reminded me of Dr. Chilton, whenever he's, like, do not approach the glass, do not touch the glass. If he attempts to hand you anything, do not accept it. It kind of went along with that as the introduction for Hannibal and his, you know, how do not underestimate this guy, which is the same in this case with the film, and I really liked it. And again, as far as the character of Michael Myers, or lack thereof, it was really well done. Like, you, you didn't, like, it went back to the, like, the classic as far as him just being superhuman, you know, and not really knowing what drives
describes him, you know, not having some funny story, or, you know, whatever, to make up his need to kill. He's just evil. However, it's not a perfect film, um, especially with the comedy. It fell flat to me. Some A lot of people in the uh, theater laughed. I didn't find it funny, especially with... When Michael comes out of the closet, um, no pun intended, like, he stabs the baby, or tries to slash the babysitter, <coughs> and then the boy yells, oh shit, like, it was supposed to be funny, but even that, it's ruined the whole moment for me, when it could have been really chilling, you know, like, even later on, well, before that scene, you know, the kid was coming downstairs, like, acting all scared because he saw something in the closet, fuck his imagination, or it could have been Michael, either one, but it just didn't work, and it ruined the whole scene for me, it took me out at the moment, and I couldn't, I was, like, so pretty much appalled by that situation that I couldn't even concentrate on that, what happened afterwards, like, I, I remember he drags her or something, and it, I think he stabs her, but I was, like, in a day, and I was, like, what, what, what the hell happened? Um, but yeah, there's that. But again, as far as the kids' comedy, he's good for the part where he's on the couch talking to him about his, you know, his, how his relationship with his babysitter isn't, like, the same anymore, like, how she's not cool, and how he's gonna tell on her for smoking pot, and she's gonna tell on him for his browser history, it was, that was part was fine, that was funny. But then, it was at the right moment, too, timing is everything in comedy and with horror. <clears throat> but not another other scene because if, if that really happened that kid would have been terrified with anyone really they wouldn't have been like oh shit you know I don't know I just don't get it okay and so the whole doctor scene you know with uh, Dr. Sarte or whatever it is I like the fact that he was interested in his Michael's characteristics as far as wanting to kill and what drives him and everything, because no one knows, really, other than the fact that he's evil. Like, he, he is, you know, a student of um, Dr. Loomis. Uh, I like that. But the fact that he actually went out of his way and killed a cop to keep him from killing Michael, I just thought that was really too drastic for his character. Maybe, if anything... Which is drastic too, but at least maybe the doctor had a needle and injected like a fluid in him to where he couldn't move or something, maybe. And he like could like his crawling away, and then Michael gets up and kills him. That would work better, but that's just an idea off the top of my head. But <clears throat> yeah. And then he put on the mask. That just threw me off. I was like, what is he gonna be the fucking killer through the rest of this thing? Because I thought, you know, since. You know, with the third film, they tried the anthology, anthology thing, it didn't work when it first came out, and then I thought they were kind of going to try to do that with this here, maybe. I was like, what the fuck, just shit on the Myers character, but then luckily it came to his senses again. And so back to the other characters, I think the majority of them, like Ray and Karen, they're not developed well, especially given the circumstances of the new story. And they could have focused more on them since they focused a lot more on Lori. They could have cut out the comedy and focused more on them. And then even the granddaughter, you know, and I don't know. I just, some of it could have been better, especially in the middle half. Um, it's mainly the comedy that kind of messed that up for me, but it was still watchable and good in parts. Um. One part I really loved was the uh, titles at the beginning of the film. You know, it was the original orange spot and then the pumpkin rising. It reminded me of one of them inflatable Halloween outdoor blow up things, which I know that wasn't their intention. It's supposed to be like the dead rising back up or, you know. But, I mean, it was really nice, even though the pumpkin was CGI, but, you know. Um, it was still nice. Um, um, towards the end, though, it was great, um, with Michael, uh, intruding 
Laura's house. Um, that whole door scene was really great, where he busts through the windows and then a pan, which he beats, plays grip ball with him, basically. Um, but that was all good, and then her hunting for him was great, and her looking through the closets, you know, like back in Action Team Eight, where she was hiding. It's paying tribute to that. But then I really liked how she was so certain, like she was gonna kill him, but she was like walking up there confidently and not as scared. She felt like she was gonna kill him, and she was, you know, not like. They didn't feel a sense of dread from her then, but then as she opened the closet and he's not in there, then she gasps and, you know, she starts freaking out again because she realizes that she underestimated him and that he's not cornered. She was, so that was really nice to see that change in her. Um, and then her looking through the mannequins and the room was really creepy. It was, I was like shaking, like my legs were like tense and everything. But I'm gonna go ahead and say it, like I've been saying with my, in my other review recently about the problem with horror movies today or movies in general is that everything that starts out good always gets dragged on, you know, by a certain film or a certain writing, and it loses its flavor. And then you end up losing the character and the motivations, and it just gets dulled and dumbed down so much to where, what's the point, really, you know? I mean, it's for money, yes, but in this case, I had figured that the Michael's true intention was not be like a zombie-killing motherfucker like he is in the other films, and that's what I liked about the sequel, is that they are going for that, and... For the most part, you can feel that, but then the rest of the film, aside from Myers and Lori, most of the characters aren't that developed. Um, so it kind of begs the question, was it worth it doing all this, bringing them back? Um, and for me, I did like it, but it could have been worth it. But there's the result we got. It was, it didn't seem quite worth all that effort to bring everything back and you know even John Carpenter with his score it's amazing um the whole soundtrack to that our score is great um I just wish it would have you know been as great as the whole movie but I did like it you know it was really good so like I'm saying it's just is it really That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so I hope you like my review and come back for more. This will be my last Halloween uh, well, horror review for a while since it's like almost the end of October. I thought this would be a good way to end it with. Um, next month, I'll be reviewing mostly like family dramas, you know, for Halloween. I mean, not Halloween, but Thanksgiving. Um, and Disney films and you know, like, probably The Stopfire, Stepmom, you know, movies like that. Um, but that's it for today.